All right. Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf. You're with Nolan. How are my adventures doing? Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. Welcome back to another devlog. Uh, this is devlog number 29. And in this devlog, we're going to be making NPCs. And also giving them dialogue. And plus you guys get a sneak peek at the little beginning of the lure. Once I start putting in the dialogue. So as of right now, as you guys can see, I'm going to slowly be tra trying to change my editing style over time. Slowly. I'll also be trying to make thumbnails again. I've just been super busy and just been really tired to the point where I haven't really thought about thumbnails as of late. But yeah, I'm back to doing that. <laughs> As you guys can see, uh, this is just a reminder that everything that you guys see in these devlogs are placeholders and to the basics of the game is done. Then I'll be changing stuff out from Fiverr people that I actually hire to look like make the art and stuff. But that's it. Let's get into it. So making the NPC wasn't actually all that bad. Just extra scripts to add on. It was the dialogue that was a little bit more interesting. And the original video was around like, I think an hour and 40 minutes. And this is a two in one video. I'm trying to change the size, have it match up to this, at least in my character. I can't really say my character to the players. Trying to have it to where it lines up. And lines up perfectly with us. I had a day off today, so I just focused on coding today and finishing the rest. And the whole weekend, I'll probably try and code in a little bit more when I get the time. Just finish adding on the collisions. Don't want them. I don't want the player to get like too close. I know that was a thing on the right side here as I tested it. So now we got to edit a few things inside of our player. Player movement. Um, interactables. We're basically making scripts for later on interactable stuff for like picking up things as well and interacting with NPCs, basically what game dev has told me. Well, said in the video. Once I get to like the NPC dialogue, I try and adventure off a little bit, but I'm kind of trying to hold off. At the moment, <laughs> I'm seriously fighting back, not like going off track right now. Because I want to learn everything bit by bit by recreating a the game, then start changing things first. The more I recreate games, the better it'll be this second time I do it. I do apologize. I forgot my uh, chat was up. You guys will see that. It's not going to be in the way of anything, really. So now we're making an input key for the control. So now you can put Z and actually interact with the item.
now we're making it to where you know we can actually interact with the item or npc Uh, I was trying this code. It did not work out. It actually didn't work at all. I may have messed up something. But you're supposed to see a green line wherever you're facing. That didn't work out. Maybe it was an old code or something. If it is, it's it still works at the end of the video. So I, I can't really say it doesn't. <laughs> so that was perfect. Maybe I maybe I put in something wrong. But as long as it was working, it didn't really matter. Now we're making sure that there's actual collider there so you can't go through the NPC or be right on top of it. Now I'm making an interactable, interactable tab, so we can link it up with a uh, NPC. And now we're going to be testing it to make sure we can interact with our NPC. So as long as it pops up down here that interacting with the NPC, I know that it's working. I know that I'm interacting with the NPC if this is popping up. So now I just test all directions. Make sure it pops up for all the directions as long as I'm touching the collider. Yeah, I changed it on the side because I, I felt like the player was getting too close on the right side. Exactly what I was talking about. Now this part is where we're going to be adding the dialogue in. The funnest part for me, the most interesting at least. Didn't really have any issues with this one or following like the guide of it. It was actually extremely easy and simple, which I'm looking forward to coding more into the dialogue system. But as of right now, we're just doing the simple line text instead of just, you know, changing names, giving the NPCs names and stuff like that. That'll be later on down the road. And I also want to do like portraits as well of the characters that you interact with, which will be very interesting down the road but as of right now that's gonna wait into the future as well so i went to find a placeholder image on google something that was like more of transparent and see-through just so if it was like a large box that I made, it will still 
you know, be able to see the rest of the scenery behind. Now, I will be making my own later. Later down the road. Or, like I said, hire people. This is a Fiverr project, so... Yeah. I put this in the wrong thing. Oh no, I I didn't put it in the wrong thing. I just didn't change the the image type. Now we're just figuring out positions. I figured out every position like later on. As of right now, we're just getting everything ready. Before we had to start coding it. To be honest, I could have also made it easy on myself and just like bought something that was like pre-made as well. But then I was like, that's no fun. <laughs> it's like, I can't solve all my issues by... Can't solve all my issues... By just, you know... Buying things. <laughs> Sometimes the hard work comes into play. Like I said, I was thinking ahead. I was just... Not just thinking about the now. That's that's my issue. I'm not thinking about the now. I'm just thinking about future things. And that's why I actually scrapped the whole name text until I was actually done. All right, so we're going to make it to where the dialogue actually shows up and actually shows shows the text and everything, you know, lines and stuff like that. Not the code we're going to be using. Uh, game Dev had a different coding way, which was interesting because it was also in our battle log. It's basically the same thing as that, but with a few things changed, which I found like Pretty interesting. I was just like, oh, we're going back and reusing other codes too. Now we're going to be making Dialogue Manager take care of a lot of our stuff. I was sitting here like, oh, I messed up something. Yeah, the D was capitalized for uh, 
dialogue text. Now I make another oopsie around the NPC area. I go back and find the mistake I made. Yeah, because that's not supposed to be there. Just casually checking back through all my codes that I've written. Here it is right here. My awake is not capitalized. See, if I didn't find that in the video, I would have found it inside of here. Okay, so now here is where I type out a little bit of the starting lure of the game. I have a, basically a whole story in mind and how I'm going to deal with a lot of uh, deal with a lot of the storytelling. Because personally for me, I want I want to give more thought into like comic side of like comic storytelling instead of you know the whole cutscene storytelling thing. I feel like that's just a lot more fun. Here's where I fix the dialogue box and just start resizing it, testing a few things. I guess I'm not sure how how big I'm gonna make everything. This is probably gonna become a lot smaller. Like I said, basic first, things like that later. I'll keep saying it so my brain can get it. Now we got to update the handling. If our dialogue manager can get it, get its hands on some things and start, you know, looking after that. And then we're also making a open and close window. Because if you haven't paid attention the last last time we interacted with that PC, it didn't it didn't actually give all the lines. So now we're coding in to where it says all the lines. Not only that, the dialog box also didn't go away either. This is the way to close that as soon as the dialogue is done and go back to free room. And we're also locking our character in place while we're um, while the dialogue's going on because I could move why there was dialogue text that was up. And that would work in like a platformer, but in this case, not so much.
All right. If it's typing, we don't want the we don't want the dialogue to just to like start zipping to the next line without people being able to read anything that's going on. And we'll get it to wait a couple of frames until it ends so the player can be able to actually click next. Now, as you can see, everything's working perfectly. Now I just got to change the text. So everything's working. Add a few things to test. So first things first, the lore. Welcome to Monster Girl Utopia. Did you know Monster Girls don't don't originate from our world? I guess I should put it in our world, maybe. I don't know. Spell, spelling comes last later on. <laughs> I'll fix that. <laughs> don't worry. And the grammar is not important right now. <laughs> but did you not know they don't originate in our world? These monster girls don't even come from our universe, believe it or not. They come from a certain dimension that is connected to our world. So that basically explains what's going to be, you know, the main start of it. It's not going to explain everything else because I have a lot of things in store. I read through it and got to fixing a little bit of typos. Now I changed it to they come from different worlds. Well, a different dimension. And that's basically it. Yep. That was fun, to be honest. I actually am going to enjoy a lot of the dialogue side of my game a lot more than anything else. And two, I can, you know, get somebody who can make 3D models towards the end and start getting the world building actually up there. Then I can actually full on focus on cutscenes. I'm excited. But yeah, with that said, I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, peace out.